Hi, welcome back to the Ask Me Mama. I'm Danny. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to be talking about genetic testing and the who, what, whens, wheres, and whys and how it's affected my family. Coming up. So let's start with why someone would have genetic testing. In our situation, it was recommended to us because we have two boys with autism. They were born um, 13 months apart and they both basically started presenting symptoms pretty much on top of each other between two and a half to three and a half years. By the time we started diagnosing our eldest we and had him diagnosed, then the process was starting with our second because he was showing a lot of delays and things. And so we went to get him checked out and he wound up eventually getting an autism diagnosis. It took us a little bit longer. Um, but once both the boys had an autism diagnosis, our developmental doctor strongly suggested that we have genetic testing done because Usually in a case like that where you have two kids back to back, they were both boys, it, pre it shows there's a stronger suggestion that something genetically could be going on. When your child is tested for genetic abnormalities, um, if it comes back with something that is a known thing, then sometimes they will know about pre-existing medical conditions that are associated with that genetic issue. So it can be really... Uh, helpful and knowing like the things that could crop up for your child in the future. It doesn't mean that necessarily those things will happen, but it just kind of gives you an idea of what to be looking out for. Okay, so let's talk about how you get genetic testing done. So we got a referral from our developmental pediatrician to a genetic consultation at a genetic clinic in our local hospital. So we made the appointment, we got all the permissions and insurance papers and everything to approve it. And we went and we had this consultation with them and basically out of our two boys, they felt that our younger son would most likely have, um, they felt like he had more of a case to show something genetically just because he's had a few things that have happened. He had to have uh, his adenoids taken out, he had to have uh, grommets or tubes put in his ears. Um, he also had to have a, another minor uh, surgery for um, something that's a little bit more private, but um, because he'd had a few things physically that he had to have taken care of, that for them showed that there was more of a case that he could have something bigger going on and they felt he would be a really good candidate for following and checking out. So in the end, we had both of our boys tested genetically. So here's the analogy they gave us to help us understand what the genetic testing they would be doing. They said, there, you know, there's different types where you can, where they have known uh, things such as fragile X or something like that, and they can test specifically for that one thing, and it's like a quicker, easier test because they know what they're looking for. Then you have something called the genetic chip, and that's what we did. It's a huge. A genetic chip is basically like they're looking at as much as they can look at and the analogy they gave us is you have a book and within that book you have pages and chapters and then it goes into paragraph sentences and words and so when you're doing a genetic uh, chip which is like a full sequencing as as in as in depth as they can get at this point in time it takes them two to three months to do the testing because they're going so deep and, and analyzing the DNA and everything and the chromosomes and how everything's working that uh, it takes a long time for them to evaluate it. And so that's what we did. And really how they do it is super easy. We just had to have a special appointment at our doctor's office with a nurse who knew the procedures for how to label it and send it off. But basically it was just a simple blood draw. They took a simple um, blood draw just like one tube of blood for each of the kids and then they labeled it and they sent it off and we didn't hear anything for two or three months. I think it actually took them two months. And then when we got the results back, I honestly wasn't expecting anything. I honestly thought that when we went into this whole thing that really it was just for research and if something came out of it, great. But I really didn't expect us to find anything 
And so when they did find something, I was completely and utterly shocked. And I actually happened to be pregnant with our fourth child when this happened. And both the boys came back with a micro duplication on a specific chromosome. Um, the one that they have is called 16P12.2. And it is known to be associated with autism and other developmental disorders. Anything on the 16th chromosome has to do with developmental things and it can affect anything from IQ to speech and other disorders. There's a whole wide spectrum of things that it can affect, but basically generally it's affecting things developmentally. And so it made a lot of sense that this is what they have because um, of them both having autism. So now the question was, where is it coming from and who has it who doesn't have it so so far up till now we had that test done in 2017 and as of now um, only the two boys have been tested right now we are actually starting the process to get our younger three kids uh, tested because we want to know if they have it and so we are i actually have an appointment this coming week to go back to the genetic clinic to discuss uh, how the boys are doing and what's going on with the younger three and to see if we can get the younger three tested because if we can find out if they're carrying this it shows us that they're most that there is a genetic link for them having it as well um so that is our story thus far i will keep everyone updated with our new genetic process and how that goes. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to answer it. Thanks for watching, have a great day, bye.